Okay, good day everyone. So today's video is for Anna Key, and thanks for donating, Anna. And um, I knew I know for a fact that uh, she won't mind uh, me not buying a planet because I can't afford it this week. Um, and there's going to be a lot of good videos coming out of me this summer, so I think it's okay. And so what I wanted to do this on was because I want to lace over the food plant teaching series with um, nutrition obviously <laughs> because every video is packed with the nutritional content of the plants and um, you know phytoplankton uh, is a food and a plant so this is the food plant teaching series so um, it makes sense and uh, you know I will eventually buy some of this when I can afford it but let's just uh, look here. Well, let's begin with David Wolf talking about um, phytoplankton. What about marine phytoplankton? I mean, this is the work of Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau essentially was the guy who brought to the world the knowledge that the entire ecosystem of the world is dependent on marine phytoplankton that they are really the producers of oxygen in the atmosphere. They produce sulfur in the rain that then goes around the planet and gets into the trees and creates the pliability and the flexibility of all the plants and trees in the world. They are the producers of the proteins that feed the most incredible animals in this world, which is very likely the whales. You know, the whales produce the biggest nervous system in the world of any organism, and yet their food is just a small, tiny, 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 tiny little microorganism on microbiology called marine phytoplankton, and that the oils that create the nervous system, the omega-3 fatty acids, the DHA, the EPA, these are found in marine phytoplankton first. So the cod liver oil that comes way down the chain, where did it get its omega-3 fatty acids in its liver from? It got it from marine phytoplankton. Where does the whale get all its, marine, all its essential fatty acids from? It gets it from the marine phytoplankton. It is food. It is the very meaning of food. Now, a bunch of scientists got together and thought, well, okay, this all makes sense. Why don't we just start feeding people marine phytoplankton? In fact, let's find the best phytoplankton for human consumption. And started experimenting with bringing marine phytoplankton to human consumption. And here's what was found. Marine phytoplankton is very likely the most nutritious food in the world for anybody, including us. It contains every known mineral in it. Everything that's needed to support life is present in marine phytoplankton. It contains the essential fatty acids. It contains all amino acids, complete protein source. It is um, probably the richest source of chlorophyll going. I mean, it's the basis of all chlorophyll. What's going on in those oceans? That plankton's converting through the sunlight in that ocean. It's converting it into sugars, also present in marine phytoplankton. There's another thing that's very powerful here, and that is marine phytoplankton contains ATP and GDP and ADP and all of the nucleotides that are actually the energy currencies of our cells. When, when we eat something, we don't just go like, okay, this protein, fat, carbohydrate is suddenly just energy. No, it actually has to go all the way down, broken down to the cellular level, and then each cell has to go, okay, I have to take that protein, that carbohydrate, that fat, and I have to convert it into ATP. I have to change it into an energy currency that we understand at the cellular level. Well, that energy currency is already present in marine phytoplankton. Therefore, here's the effect. You take in the marine phytoplankton and you have instant energy. Your body doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to do a currency exchange. So the effect of that is you have instant energy and no stimulation. That's ridiculously powerful. It means that you have a, an upping of energy at the cellular level through every cell in your body, but you don't have any stimulation, meaning there's no crash later. We are, we have been so programmed in the past to believe that if we have an up, then we have to have a down. That's a bit, that's a bunch of garbage. That's exactly true if you're eating like chemicals and you know cardboard, soggy cardboard, or whatever. I don't even know what people are eating anymore. I think some some kind of cross between chemicals, soggy cardboard, and some kind of factory farm um, <laughs> hormone laden um, cancerous growth of some sort. That's pretty much like dinner. And 
you know, once you once you're off that, it's like you can actually get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. You just keep going and going and going. <coughs> and there is no down because it's not a drug. It's actually a food. Marine. Plankton. Okay, so that was David Wolf on marine phytoplankton. Fuck, he inspires me, eh? <laughs> Anyway, that uh, type of plankton and that bottle that flashed on the screen at the start of that little um, excerpt was this, Nanochloropsis. That's the type. Now, um, he says in another video, you know, and he, me he mentioned it there. He said, you know, these scientists started looking into it to see which one was best for human consumption. And, you know, like he said, it's a complete protein source, all 18 amino acids and, you know, plenty of chlorophyll and this and that, and mineral rich. Um, and that makes, stops every kind of like hunger craving and stuff. Um, even I've noticed, um, even uh, when I've had Himalaya Sole, uh, which is the crystals you sit in water, and it's more mineral rich than even Himalaya salt because it's a deeper strata layer. But you know, marine phytoplankton, this stuff has um, many minerals and trace minerals in it. Um, so, you know, it's a food, it's a plant. <laughs> I thought it's apt. And you can already buy it in little bottles. I'm guessing on David Wolf's uh, longevitywarehouse.com um, because he was holding up a bottle in that video and another video so it looks already available and you know there's another guy called Dr. Robert Z uh, Kazar from Hawaii um, and uh, you know I found out about uh, drinking hibiscus from him one of his videos and uh, now I always have that eclectic tea where I've got like 20 different teas in there <laughs> and um, so I call that you know I carry around a shaman tea bag now <laughs> it's pretty big actually and um, yeah, so you know this uh, phytoplankton is just a real eclectic food source and the base of food on on Earth as well, like he noted, you know, and it is a food. <laughs> and um, you know, some people haven't seen the picture I've posted of. Uh, it's got this uh, like uh, Asian lady with a weird mask on her head going into her mouth. And it's actually someone in the world has invented this uh, sort of mask suit thing with all these pipes uh, which feeds you, um, I think, this sort of stuff, <laughs> phytoplankton and stuff. And um, that's how they're saying is a futuristic way of uh, nutrient um, receiving. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's coming through all these pipes and... Um, that's on the high tech page in uh, consciouszine.com. And here's Anna's page in Consciouszine. Uh, she's an artist. Her name is Anna Key. And she's just put some of her art on there. Um, she's going to do more to her page, but I just put some stuff up for her while she's doing something else. And. Um, that's not her artwork there at the bottom, but I just put it on there because it's cool. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Eyes everywhere. That guy's been doing some energy work. So, marine phytoplankton. Like David was saying, scientists have narrowed it down to one. And that's this one, Nanochloropsis. You know, they na apparently they narrowed it down to about five good ones that uh, humans could consume, probably all with you know complete protein profiles, like all 18 amino acids and mineral dense and vitamin rich, um, sort of five different ones, uh, five different phytoplankton. But in the end, they've gone with Nanochloropsis, apparently. Um, according to him at least and anyway so here's another website Jacques Ves Cousteau the famous underwater explorer once said the future of nutrition is found in the ocean and 2000 years ago the Greek physician Hippocrates regarded by many as the father of modern medicine coined this phrase let thy food be thy medicine let thy medicine be thy food 
So what was nature's very first complete food source that we know about? Around 3 billion years ago, a simple single-celled organism called marine phytoplankton appeared in our primal oceans, long before anything or anyone was living or growing on the land. In fact, many creatures that are alive today, including humans, may never have evolved if it wasn't for marine phytoplankton. Scientists have now classified thousands of different species and subspecies of marine phytoplankton, not to be confused with chlorella, spirulina, seaweed, or Klamath Lake blue-green algae. So not to be confused with those. And this is from Primal Food Store. It looks like you can buy a lot of stuff here too, by the look of it. Interesting. So it looks all pretty, you know, organic sort of forefront... Uh, nutrition and health and uh, yeah I do have a saying you know manic organic or organic not synthetic and death you know uh, death in death out consumption is no good we want life in life out consumption and production so according to NASA marine phytoplankton generates at least 50% of the oxygen in our atmosphere marine phytoplankton Phytoplankton also forms the base of the ocean's food chain, providing an essential source of nutrients and nutrition for creatures that live there. So, um, you know, this is the basis of the food chain on Earth. So it makes sense for us to go there. We can cultivate it too, all by itself, you know, just so you just have uh, nanochloropsis or a different kind in a certain tank. Here we go, they've mentioned it here. Uh, only in recent years have scientists identified just one unique strain of marine phytoplankton that is ideal for all humans as a valuable source of nutrition. Nanochloropsis gaditana. Okay, so that's actually the specific one. Gaditana. That's it there. It contains a near-perfect balance of nutrients that are either useful or essential in supporting human health and well-being. Blueprint marine phytoplankton trademark is not cultivated in open ponds or taken from the ocean. Instead, we grow and harvest this unique superfood on dry land in a greenhouse-like structure called a closed photobioreactor. Our high-tech method of cultivation faithfully replicates the way marine phytoplankton grows in the wild. A closed photobioreactor completely isolates the algae from any possible contamination and ensures optimum purity while providing consistently high levels of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, essential fatty acids. Fish obtain their omega-3 from phytoplankton, plus hundreds of phytochemicals including chlorophyll, and powerful antioxidants in the form of xanthines. Um, for instance, volgaxanthin, zeaxanthin, I mentioned in yesterday's video that I made for Jill Lopez on beetroots, the $30 bandit food plant teaching video called uh, Beetroots Beneficial Beetalanes. So you can watch that for more information on that. Uh, about xanthins, uh, unfortunately there are, com and by the way, I may as well summarize, they recommend eating, uh, you know, two whole, um, you can break it up into halves, so do, f you know, half a um, uh, beetroot for four days, or, you know, two beetroots in two days, or you can have two in one day, but I don't know about that, <laughs> you might be having weird shits. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, there are companies. Of, uh, da -da, okay, so from DNA verified Nanochloropsis gatina, gatinana, or no, gatina, gatinana, gatana, <laughs> gati, no, gaditana. Jeez, well, I wasn't even looking at the word. Nanochloropsis gatid, gaditana starter cultures sourced directly from the world's leading marine science laboratory so this looks like a good place to maybe get this from and there's a video here on phytoplankton 
So uh, I definitely recommend trying to get your hands on some of this Nanochloropsis gaditana. Um, it says here also, marine phytoplankton is a primitive, single-celled organism needing just water, minerals and sunlight to survive and thrive. And because it is so simple in structure, phytoplankton is e extremely easy for humans to digest and assimilate at the cellular level, literally bypassing the digestive system. Unlike the complex fibers or fibrous structure of land-based plant or animal food sources that have to be broken down in the gut before humans can assimilate and benefit from any nutritional content they might contain. And we do know that, that you know our bodies don't contain the enzymes to break down plant cellulose, for instance. You know, so we have to, that's why juicing is such a good idea because you're getting all the nutrients out of the food and you're not digesting the um, cellulose of the plant. And so this, like uh, David Wolf was saying, bypasses, you know, it's, it's instant energy. It's this ATP and um, that's, you know, little energy packets for your cell and it's so that it doesn't have to be digestively broken down to get to that point. It's already at that point. And so it's just so readily and easily absorbable and um, without much, um, you know, your blood sugar, your blood sugar spikes 30% whenever you eat anything. That's why when you're driving, you know, you're, you know, you might feel a bit, you know, trotting off in your mind and then you eat something up and you're up again. It's because your blood sugar raises and all this stuff happens, you know, when you eat meat, um, there's a white blood cell reaction because it's dead bloody flesh <laughs> going into you and there's a white blood cell, you know, reaction in your body and all this is just extra work for your body. And so if we're looking at longevity, it's a good idea to go straight to something like this because it bypasses the need for, you know, energy to be used when it doesn't need to be to get nutrients. So usually we would eat food and try and extract the nutrients out of it. Even chewing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you wanted to get like really far into it, it's just bypassing everything. Yeah, it's already energy packet form. You know, complete protein file, what else did it say? Essential fatty acids like omega-3. And, um, you know, it just seems really good. And remember, our blood hemoglobin is like one difference from plant chlorophyll because we have iron at the center. I showed you that in another video on environmental mental page. So, you know, this has got chlorophyll in it and um, a load of it. And these xanthans which we haven't fully researched. Um, you know, we've started to find these in some foods. And then antioxidants, of course. So yeah, th this is a really powerful way to uh, get your nutrition. Because you're not expending any energy when you're taking it in. So I definitely recommend we uh, start looking into this more and, and try and buy it if you've got the money. As soon as I've got the money and I'll find something worthwhile buying. It says down here you can purchase blueprint marine phytoplankton in convenient tubs of veggie capsules or loose powder that is packaged in either 60 gram bottles or 500 gram vacuum packed foil sachets. And yeah they do recommend like I would too to you know not mix it with tap water. Now in another video in the food plant teaching series I showed you vital greens which has 76 ingredients. You should read the back of the label. Um, actually, I, I guess I could. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go get it from the kitchen because I do have some vital greens on me. And um, I'm going to go get that and I'll read you the ingredients. So I already shot a video on this 76 ingredient vital greens and I think it's Australian made. Yep. It's made in Australia and wheat free, gluten free, dairy free. Um, six vital nutrients or ingredients sorry it says on the front and so I did do a video on this a short one but uh, I didn't say what was in it so let's have a look there's uh, one two three four five six seven eight subtitles 
which the first one is greens, vegetables, and high nutrient fruits. Now this is very small writing because there's so many ingredients. So this is stuff from fruits, veggies, and greens. Organic spirulina, apple powder, chlorella powder, alfalfa powder, wheatgrass powder, barley leaf powder, as I can't even read that one. Um, acerola fruit extract, carica papaya powder. Broccoli powder, pineapple fruit juice extract. I'm going to open the window behind me one second so I can see this label better. Uh, okay, what have we got here? Bilberry fresh fruit extract, rosehip fruit extract, red beet powder, carrot root powder, licorice root powder, wolfberry or goji fruit extract. Hawthorn fruit extract, kelp whole plant powder. Now then there's a second uh, subtitle, antioxidants and immune support. So that was what we just read was from greens, vegetables, high nutrient fruits. And so antioxidants and immune support, citric acid, RS alpha lipoic acid, astragalus root extract. And that's actually a very a de-aging thing that works on the telomerase on the end of the chromosome and remember that's one reason we age because every time our cells divide these uh, little telomeros, uh, telomeres, they, uh, they also degrade. So uh, astragalus is in the super pill 1 and 2 by John uh, Teargarden, I think his name is. Anyway, so grapeseed extract, that's anti-cancerous, green tea extract. And also in grapeseed extract, you get resveratrol, which, um, you know, I heard David Wolf say it doesn't let his immune system go down past a certain energetic level. So that's really good. And that's in red wine. So you get the same thing in, gre in uh, grapeseed extract. Green tea extract, cacao bean, polyphenol extract, rosemary leaf extract, beta glucans, Rishi mushroom powder, shiitake or shiitake mushroom powder, and then it says resveratrol just by itself. So you got you got double resveratrol, resveratrol. So there's another subtitle: additional vital uh, vitamins and minerals, citrus bioflavonoid extract, vitamin C, calcium from citrate, phosphate and carbonate salts, potassium, phosphate, oh, sorry, potassium, uh, vitamin E, magnesium, vitamin B3, silica, zinc, coenzyme Q10, which is an, a powerful antioxidant that they uh, have just by itself, they, that's sold by itself. Vitamin B5, B6, B1, B2, B3, Provitamin A, manganese, vitamin B7, B9, copper, selenium, vitamin B12, chromium, vitamin D2, which is not the good vitamin uh, D, you want vitamin D3, that's better. Now, uh, under another subtitle, liver support and herbs, rice brain powder, milk thistle extract, dandelion whole plant extract, burdock root extract, under another sub subtitle, digestive nutrients, enzymes, probiotics, and, and uh, prebiotics. Globe artichoke extract, inulin, ginger rhizome powder, bromelain, slippery elm bark powder, lactobalicis aphidophilus, what's in all the yogurt, Another thing in yogurt, I think here, Bifidobacterium bifidum. So a lot of ingredients. Papain from carica papaya and pineapple. Nervous system support, another subtitle. Siberian ginseng extract. 
lysine, organic flaxseed powder, go to cola extract, withania somnifera, ashwagandha, that is. Now, under another subtitle, alkaline vegetable protein, it says 927 milligram out of my 120 gram thing. All natural base, um, papaya, broccoli, carrot, pineapple, natural vanilla, organic thiamutan, natural sweetener. Thomatin, thomatin, organic thomatin, some kind of uh, natural sweetener apparently. I haven't heard of that. You could also use stevia. Now, so that's a lot of uh, things in there, and it's called 76 Vital Ingredients, and uh, it's from Vital Greens. So um, I do have a video showing you, I think, the um, thing, but you can just Google it. So that's really good one. And now all of this is part of, you know, this first bio revolution bridge. And I'll take that nomenclature and that sort of moniker from uh, Ray Kurzweil, the co-director of Singularity University. And um, he's that futurist and the transcendent man because he's only aged biologically two years in the last 16 years because of his intense supplementation and so on. Now this is part of bio revolution bridge one where we have slower aging because of you know thinking you know law of attraction style stuff positive thinking stuff so that the body is producing certain neuropeptides but remember you don't want to stay in just positive the universe positive and negative and I have linked depression depressive states um, with novelty <laughs> and so that you don't become an airhead However, you know, positive thinking is good for releasing certain neuropeptides. Um, I always try and do it if I'm feeling, uh, you know, not the best to uh, just even to just create more dopamine and serotonin and whatever else, you know. And so uh, I really think that uh, this is the way to go um, because this will get us through to the second bio revolution bridge which is reverse aging and you know that's around 2040 2050s and all that and at that same time that's when computers will be powerful enough to have the same sort of connectivity and power as the connections of the human brain and you know you can upload your brain to a computer fully and you know that's not going to be uploading the full you because we're not made out of 2d we're multi-dimensional beings we are not just what you see before you. You have to see into things. That's my message across the board. See into things and do things multidimensionally, especially healing. Now, this is one really good way to get an array of a complete profile of uh, protein. Remember, all 18 immune, uh, amino acids in this phytoplankton. And it's an eclectic way by itself. So when we, and then you get, you know, you add in your. I don't know, your krill oil if you want, but you, you don't really need to anymore because you're getting it from here. And, um, you know, and then if we join something like this powerful phytoplankton with something like, you know, 76 ingredient vital greens, all the stuff I just read out to you, um, I think we're really on a, a good path to health there. And um, it's important, you know, a lot of uh, psychosomatic issues can come from health, from 2D blockages. And so it is part of multi-dimensional healing to eat well and, you know, live well uh, and take care of our 2D and 3D aspects as well, uh, not just mind over matter the whole day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks, Anna, for donating. And what's the $30 bandit? I'll, you can Google or YouTube that. And here's the videos I've got so far, 28 hours, almost 3,000 views. Cool and 70 videos so I've got a couple of free foraging sort of videos and then there's all the ones where people donate and I do it on a specific plant like this video even and uh, yeah a few other videos chucked in on the side like 15 reasons why grow your own food I definitely recommend watching that because it's good to think about that and it's good for you
Alright, hello. Um, so, there's one other thing I wanted to add into the end of this video, and that's that um, the other day I read uh, this paper, uh, which is from the Hemp Embassy in Nimbin. Nimbin is the only anti prohibition cannabis town in Australia. It's still illegal marijuana or cannabis. I like to call it cannabis because it's from the Cannabisia family and marijuana is associated with the 1930s propagandistic uh, brainwash films like Reefer Madness and all these sorts of films where they used to talk about the devil's harvest making the woman evil. <laughs> anyway, so I really like this. Um, it's <laughs> I'm going to make several videos on the back of just this. And it's a small paper. It's not even big. It's free from the... Uh, Hemp Embassy in Nimbin. I think it's always the same, and they've probably just developed it over time. So here, for instance, it's talking about alpha linoleic acid, essential fatty acids, and hemp. Like just great articles in here. Now, there's one that I found on ADHD, and yeah, here we go. So, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, as it's medically known. Um, just let me turn up the volume, yeah, all good. Alright, so, it's a bit of a mouthful, this article, uh, but... I kind of want to read the whole thing, but I probably won't read the whole thing. It's just about um, phospholipids and ADHD. And for me, ADHD falls under autism spectrum disorder. Now, there's all sorts of theories surrounding all this that vaccines create it. I don't think the vaccines create it, but I think they're part of the problem. Um, anyway, so let's not get into that side of it today. Um, I've heard people say... Uh, I'll have to do that in another video. I need to make sure of something. Anyway, so let's just read this article. Startled researchers concluded that the consumption of cannabis had positive impact on performance, behavior, and mental state of ADHD people. This is in stark contrast to the effects of cannabinoids on healthy human subjects. So it's in contrast to um, the effects of cannabinoids on healthy human subjects. So they're saying for unhealthy people like me with ADHD that uh, cannabinoids have a very beneficial effect. Now I notice this. I wouldn't say that I'm uh, totally addicted to it, but I feel good after when I'm smoking cannabis and taking in cannabis um, you know, reasonably regularly. You know, that can be two weeks break and then not do it and then just have it on the weekend. Or it can be every day, you know. Um, I'm not going to talk about dosage of cannabis on this video today. Because I'll make a, a whole video just on cannabis soon. It'll be hours long. <laughs> so, um, in people with ADHD, THC, you know, the uh, compound in cannabis, and synthetic CB1 receptor agonists increased impulsivity. The reverse effect is produced by CB1 antagonists. Although few comprehensive studies of endocannabinoid ADHD interactions in humans have yet been con conducted, there is a growing body of animal model and cell culture literature indicating a strong link between endocannabinoid system abnormalities and ADHD symptoms. So there is a strong link between endocannabinoid system abnormalities and ADHD symptoms, apparently. Not all the positive benefits of cannabis consumption on ADHD symptoms may be due to THC. Other constituents of the cannabis... Now, before we go on, I just want to say the reason that I'm throwing this in with phytoplankton and a food plant teaching series is because you can eat cannabis. I have a recipe on our Psychedelic Biodome Earth page where you make it into canny butter. You can actually change the molecular structure if you burn it over um, 300 degrees and below 350 degrees. And that's actually in this paper too. I didn't know that, and it's right there actually. So, um, 
the reason I'm saying this is because in a second it says something about uh, deficiency of phospholil phos phospholipid dysfunction and to do with ADHD. So um, a phospholipid is a, a fatty acid. Yeah, fatty acids, yeah. And um, so it's saying something about, you know, phospholipid dysfunction to do with uh, ADHD and ADD. Um, and cannabis is mixed into all this. So it's not just for no reason that I've been smoking this and I'm not just doing it for no reason. I believe I'm very guided by the Madre, at least. Uh, you know, I've, the earth light comes through me and all that. <laughs> so... Um, we're going to get into it, but the reason I've thrown this in here is because krill oil has phospholipids too. And so when you start to take all these oils like hemp oil, I don't recommend flaxseed oil, and you can listen to David Wolf speaking about that and why not, I've forgotten. Um, I just save things in a meta way. I, I forget a lot of details often and I save things in a, a sort of meta, larger circle way and that's why I'm a philosopher and like ontologist and all that because it always comes back to you know core axioms of uh, the zeitgeist, you know the spirit of the times and timelines and you know deep ontology etiology. So anyway, um, everything comes back to it. You know, just like you say, biologically everything can come back to psychosomatica. So healing biology with psychosomatic healing is a, a great idea, obviously. So. Um, Phospholipids are in krill oil, hemp, um, then are they in hemp seeds, in hemp oil? I can't remember, but I know they're in krill oil for sure and um, you know so that's a good idea for people with ADHD to take not only cannabis because that will happen, there will be a lot of self-medicating, you know your kid won't always go to the doctor to ask, you know we'll figure it out by ourselves you know and um, if uh, krill oil can help, why not take krill oil as well because it's got phospholipids in there, a really good amount. So let's keep reading. Other constituents of cannabis plants such as the atypical antipsychotic drug cannabidol or CBD or cannabidoil can modulate the endocannabinoid levels. Although it is a weak reverse agonist at the CB1 receptor, meaning it binds to the receptor and activates it to produce the opposite pharmacodynamic effect of THC. Yeah. CBD is also capable of inhibiting both the anandamide, anandamide, I can't say it, anandamide transporter, anandamide transporter. So CBD is also capable of inhibiting both the anandamide transporter and metabolic breakdown of anandamide via inhibition of FAAH acronym fatty acid amide hydrolase the enzyme responsible for the metabolic breakdown of anandamide I told you it was a mouthful <laughs> Cannabis oil therefore increases the availability of free intercellular anandamide. Cannabinoids like CBD may also be beneficial to ADHD because they are strong antioxidants and as such are neuroprotective. Oh, okay. So ADHD, here's another sub subtitle. ADHD as EFA or essential fatty acids acronym deficiency. Phospholipid dysfunction. Many developmental psychiatric conditions like ADHD, dyslexia and autism might relate to either essential fatty acid deficiency, EFAD, or phospholipid deficiency. Phospholipids are the primary structural component of cellular membranes and they are mainly comprised of a phosphate group and two fatty acid tails. Fatty acids are metabolic derivatives of the EFAs, like omega-3, 6, and 9 essential fatty acids. What quantities, oh, sorry, what quantifies some fatty acids are as essential is that the body cannot manufacture these building blocks of 
other fatty acids from raw materials and so they must be included in the diet so Veronica that's why you should eat and not just meditate all the time I have a friend and she pretty much just subsists off an orange a day here and there and tea and so we're moving into light beings yeah and there's a lot of people fasting out there um, in that sort of way it's like long-term well they call it breatharianism you know and really that's mind over matter too so foods rich in EFAs include fish shellfish most nuts and some seeds especially hemp seeds and flax seeds again I prefer hemp seeds over flax seeds one important group of fatty acids and fatty acid metabolites include the fatty acid metabolite of tylenol, tylenol and the endocannabinoids like anandamide. anandamide. It has even been demonstrated that eating a diet rich in the right EFAs or essential fatty acids, for they aren't all equal, can actually increase free central nervous system CNS central nervous system endocannabinoid levels by as much as tenfold let me say that again it's been demonstrated that eating a diet rich in EFAs or essential fatty acids can actually increase free central nervous system that's inside you endocannabinoid levels so that's right people don't realize that they have an endocannabinoid system and there just so happens to be by the happenstance of the universe um, cannabis <laughs> cannabis endocannabinoid system match it up connect the dots it's funny that it's illegal huh and for people who don't know uh, why it's illegal not just the propaganda but you know the logging industry um, DuPont wanted to you know not get overthrown by everybody growing their own free hemp and they wanted to keep making profit and this is one reason I don't like the corporate fascist sort of state that we're in stating here more and more all the time and I think it has to fall because we're putting you know disincarnate corporate structures in front of carnate sold humans and that's just not the way and not sustainable so some evidence sorry any metabolic dysfunction in the processes between EFAs and phospholipids and from phospholipids back to fatty acids fatty acids could present as symptoms of EFAD which was essential fatty acid deficiency and would affect the endocannabinoid system so there's a connection between phospholipids and the endocannabinoid system here some evidence indicates that omega-3 fatty acids are not particularly affected in ADHD rather the omega-6 fatty acids from which arachidonic acid and its metabolite anandamide are produced are, are implicated in ADHD related changes in fatty acid and phospholipid le levels so omega-6 is implicated in changes here with that phospholipids and endocannabinoid stuff in ADHD all mechanism has been discovered that a sorry a mechanism has been discovered that allows the CB1 receptors in the blood to a CBD is uh, sorry CB1 remember it's cannabinoid not cannabidoil um, that CBD is we're talking about a cannabinoid CB1 receptors in the brain yeah you have these so a mechanism has been discovered that allows the CB1 receptors in your brain in the blood to cooperate with CB2 receptors in the central nervous system to drive the transport of anandamide and other endocannabinoids in a undirectional fashion across the blood-brain barrier allowing the circulatory system to act as a reservoir of endocannabinoids for the brain thereby allowing increases in endocannabinoid and endocannabinoid precursor serum levels to drive up the CNS endocannabinoid levels as well
So there's a double effect between CB1 and CB2 receptors there with that. Although they would not address all symptoms of EFAD or essential fatty acid deficiency or phospholipid uh, dysfunction, the symptoms which were related to changes in endocannabinoid levels would be addressed by exogenous cannabinoids like THC, CBD and preparations of whole cannabis. So, you know, eating the leaves and eating canny butter and stuff. So, um, that's interesting and I love this paper and there's going to be more coming in future videos uh, from this paper. So, you can actually go to Nimbin in Australia, in North New South Wales, Australia and get this paper here. So, it doesn't say who's written it. So, sorry, I can't quote you. Um, it doesn't say anyone's name and it looks, I don't know who's prepared this paper, but it's from the Hemp Embassy in Nimbin. So there you go, Anna. Um, there's something to tell autistic, artistic, autistic, artistic children that you talk to in the future if you go ahead with all the stuff you've been uh, talking to me about. And I say you take it from jibber jabber and put it into action and, uh, you know, really law of attraction it and think about it over and over and, um, you know, start attracting it and all that. And I wish you luck because we do need to, we can't treat, you know, you can't treat me, for instance, with the conventional treatments of society. For, I'll go shooting up a school if you start giving me Prozac. It's been happening all over America. You know, if you give me cannabis, I'll chill the fuck out. Otherwise, you've got problems because I do have ADHD and I, <laughs> I love being a rampant, uh, you know, the picture of Tazzy Devil from uh, Warner Bros cartoons. <laughs> I often say to people that, well, you know, when I've smoked cannabis for 14 years now, it's really calmed that down. It's really concentrated me in certain ways and made me an infopreneur and really made me, you know, informationally dense and um, take the time to sit back because if I wasn't high, I'd be outside more often doing stuff and I'd be really restless and I don't sit and connotate as deeply and sit as much. You know, sit in study and connotation and all this sort of thing. And so cannabis has really helped me with that as well. And all this stuff we just read about the endocannabinoid system, phospholipids and anadamide and all this business uh, with the CB1 and CB2 receptors and that, you know, cannabis seems to have some effect in that area of EFAD or essential fatty acid deficiency. So that's interesting, isn't it? Not only do we have an endocannabinoid system, but it can affect, you know, cannabis can affect um, a range of other, a score of other and a gamut of other arrays in our body like fatty acids. And, um, you know, would probably go a long way to mood and a lot of stuff, you know. So thanks again for donating Anna and so I could get this video out today. And I'm uh, Benjamin Kallenberg from www.consciouszine.com. And um, I think that's all I wanted to add today. So go over the video if you've forgotten something like krill oil, good for phospholipids. So good for the ADHD and this, it might even connect up with this endocannabinoid system, you see. So uh, enjoy guys and no problem. Thank me later. <laughs> okay, and lastly, I just thought we'd uh, find a picture of it. So I just Google imaged Nanochloropsis gaditana phytoplankton. And uh, here's some images of phytoplankton, and it opens up to this link here. And it's got a, several different types, but there is our nano. Chloropsis gaditana strain. So that's it there. At five nanometer, I think that means. Or millimeters? No. What is that sign again? I think that means nanometers, doesn't it? Anyway, so there's a picture of uh, what we're uh, wanting to eat. <laughs>